Welcome to Monomotion tutorial series. In this video, we're going to show you how to use our hand interaction technology in combination with Unity's Air Foundation framework. By the end of this video, you're going to be able to place 3D objects in AR and use your hands to interact with them. If you're new to the features and capabilities of SDK Lite, I highly suggest you pause this video and go check the Getting Started video link in the description. Air Foundation is an augmented reality framework that is being developed and offered by Unit Technologies. It is mostly known for the plane detection and position tracking capabilities. However, there are frequent updates with additional features coming out with every new release. We will be putting a link in the description, so make sure to check it out. While you're at it, Unit Technologies offers a great tutorial section for this framework, so we highly recommend to check it out as well. To get Air Foundation in your project, open the Unity Editor and navigate to the Windows tab. Then select the option of Package Manager. You're going to need the Air Foundation package as well as the Air Kit and Air Pro counterparts. We strongly recommend to use the supported and stable versions only. At the time of this recording, the version is 2.0 and is the one that we use in production. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will be using a modified version of SDK Lite that supports AR Foundation. It is available as a Unity package through a products page and you can download it for free. The next step is to import our Unity package into the project and make sure that all of the necessary parts of the package are selected. With this in mind, click Import. Similar to the other free version of SDK Lite, we have provided you with a license key and a bundle ID for the project, so you can compile your project right away. Everything will be set automatically by the Manomotion setup script, so you don't have to change anything. Now that both technologies are present in our project, we need to make sure that they're working in sync and they're not competing with each other for resources. You see, both Air Foundation and SDK Lite need access to the phone's camera in order to process the image and return the information we need. Air Foundation will be returning the information of the detected surfaces and the world position of the phone, while Manomotion SDK Lite will be returning the information of the detected hand. To overcome this situation where both frameworks compete for the camera, we have modified the input manager of Monomotion to work with an external frame. So now the Air Foundation session is responsible for opening the phone's camera without any conflict of resources. With that in place, the Air Foundation and SDK Lite package now has all the features of hand interaction and gesture analysis available in 3D space. As always, we're going to spin off a quick demo scene that you can code along and try it by yourself. In this scenario, we're going to use the click hand gesture to instantiate a virtual object in space and then interact with it every time our hand touches it. I'm going to start my project from a fresh scene this time and build upon it with the key components that I'm going to need. I'm going to remove the default camera from the scene and instead replace it with the Air Session RG component that has the Air camera there as a child. This is the main camera of the scene that your other scripts and game objects might need. For your convenience, mark it as the main camera as well. Finally, I'm going to add an Air Session component that is going to give me all of the information regarding the status of the session. For the hand interaction components, all that I need is the Air Monomotion Manager and the Monomotion Canvas. I'm going to skip any plain visualization for this demo, and instead I'm going to display the session status in the user interface instead. As a general principle of Air Foundation that also applies to this demo, it is great to first guide the user to look around and localize. To achieve this session status update, I'm going to create a user canvas, make it responsive, and add a text mesh pro text component that will use display the current status of the session. To achieve that, I'm going to create a script that is going to do two key things. The first one is to be alert for any changes in the status of the session, and the second one is to set the text of this component to an appropriate message that fits the session status. With the session status in place, we are ready to explore hand interaction concepts. One of the most frequent requests of the community 
is to spawn items with the gestures and interact with them in AR. In today's tutorial, we're going to use a trigger gesture to spawn instances of a prefab to our scene. As a reminder, trigger gestures are the gesture information that happens on a single frame, similar to an event of touching the screen or clicking the mouse. So when the user performs a click trigger gesture, we're going to spawn a game object right in front of us. To do so, I'll make an empty game object and attach a custom script that I wrote that implements this feature. I named the script clicker since the main functionality that it implements. Similar to the session status, I'm also subscribing to the session state changed because I want to only allow the user to click if the AR tracking quality is good. With this in place, I'm exposing a public game object variable where I place the object that I'm going to spawn every time I perform the click gesture. As a matter of fact, for this specific demo, I have created a prefab out of a sphere primitive and I added the custom tag interactable that is going to come in hand just in a second. With my item prefab at check, I can now return to my script and start receiving hand information from Monomotion. To do that, I'm accessing the Monomotion Manager instance as usual and retrieving the hand info at every frame. Remember, we want to be able to spawn an interactable every time we perform the click trigger gesture. So what I'm going to do next is to get the currently detected trigger gesture and check if it's a type click. When the click trigger gesture is detected, I'm going to instantiate an instance of prefab and set its transform position to the one of the camera. To make things a bit easier to see, I'm going to add a small offset in the z-axis so the item spawns a bit further away. To top things off, I'm going to make the handheld device vibrate so we can get some feedback of our successful action. With this setup so far, we can open our app, look around with our device to localize, and by performing the click gesture, we can start instantiating a prefab as much as we want. Time to add an additional level of interaction that will help us get rid of all the spheres that we have just instantiated. I am going to create an interaction point that will follow my hand, and when it comes in touch with the spheres, it's going to destroy them. To achieve this, I have created a small cube and gave it a red color by a new material. I have set its collider to trigger, and I have added a rigid body so we can have trigger collision detection in place. Finally, I have set the rigid body to kinematic, since I will be the one moving it and I don't want any other forces. To make the interaction point follow my hand, I'm going to attach to it a custom script that is going to update its position. As with all scripts so far, I'm making sure that the air session state is in tracking mode so the quality of the tracking is good. With this in place, I'm going to once again get the hand information by accessing the Monomotion Manager instance. I have decided to make this interaction point follow my palm only when I have my hand in the Mano class grab gesture. To achieve this, I'm going to be checking what's the currently detected mano class on each frame and specifically check if it's of type of wrap gesture. When this happens, I'm going to move the interaction object to the palm center position that I've stored right above. Notice that for my convenience, I'm asking the mano utils class to give me the 3D position by passing the estimated depth value for the entire hand. With this done, I'm now able to move the interaction point to the position of my palm when I have my hand in the grab gesture metal class. Time to put the final pieces in place and our popping mechanism is ready. Back in the Unity editor, I've set the tag of my item prefab to interactable. I made a decision deliberately because I'm only interested in destroying those items, so they could be things that I do not want to destroy in my scene. So now by using Unity's on trigger ender event, I can destroy any of the spheres this interaction point comes in contact with. To compile my project, I'm going to choose the platform of my choice, either iOS or Android, and then let the default settings of the project as they are. The script Monomotion setup has already set the requirements for the camera, file system, as well as the project package name. As with all free licenses we provide you with, please do not change it as the solution will not work. All right. Time for the creative challenge of this video. 
For the coding part of this tutorial, we want you to open the clicker script and replace the item prefab with another item that you think is awesome. Feel free to share with us your creation. That was it for this tutorial. If you encounter any issue, feel free to contact us for support. As always, if you need any help or just want to share something cool you've made with our technology, please post it in our Discord channel or send it via email.